So the next presentation will be um, about AMBER tools. And it's presented by Pierre La Lecom. Right? Uh, right? OK. OK, then I plug that. Uh, sun, it's OK. No. Uh, it's on the VGA. Yeah. Ah, it should work. Yeah, cool. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to present you uh, uh, Hamby tools, like uh, the toolbox I've I written uh, for uh, we fost for uh, sound field synthesis with uh, Ambisonics, and so a few people so uh, demo next door. So um, I don't know if everyone is familiar with Ambisonics. I just have a few slides to recall the theory behind it, and I and go more into the the goals of Ambi tools. Some uh, insight of the spherical harmonics implementation with fost radial filters implementation. Then an overview of the first tools and some extra tools. Okay, so so the uh, ambisonics uh, method allows to do like two main stuff, like specialization. So you take uh, monophonic uh, sources and you you assign like a position in space, and then you encode them through spherical harmonics representation. In this domain called the ambisonic domain, you can do sound field transformation, like uh, rotation directional filtering and so on. And then you decode it. So there's it's a matrix operation which computes the loudspeaker signals for a loudspeaker array synthesis or even like for binaural synthesis with headphones. As well, you can use spherical microphone arrays like Eigen Mic or, or others to capture the sound field in 3D and then do this same encoding. And then you can mix both and then uh, make a natural sound field plus adding like virtual sources on it transform all of that and then decode it on the loudspeaker array. So the formalism of that, it's relying on the, everything is expressed with a spherical, co in spherical coordinate system. The one I'm using is this one with the elevation going from a, a, a median plane to a vertical. And the spherical harmonics, this is the, the function where you're gonna, uh, which uh, you're gonna describe the, the sound pressure field, are these functions of the two direction involving like Legendre polynomials and uh, sine and cosine functions plus a norm normalization factor. So here are the few first spherical harmonics in 3D. So this is the, the family that the, the order zero is omnidirectional, first order is like a figure of eight and so on, more and more uh, like uh, directivity uh, patterns. And so you can order this family of function in several ways. I'm using the, the standard like Ambix with uh, ACN and Bisonic channel numbers, the where you can uh, have just one subscript to describe the spherical harmonics. So instead of having M and N, you can make this little computation to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And it's sorted uh, like a pyramid. OK. So the. How does it work? The, the, the idea behind it is like you describe the, the wave equation inside a volume where there is no, no source. And then when you look the, pres the pressure solution in spherical coordinate system, you have this equation called, called uh, fourier bessel series, which says that the pressure everywhere inside your domain is an infinite summation with involving spherical Bessel functions for the radial part and uh, and directional part is, is the description of our spherical harmonics. So because the, this, those functions and those functions are fixed, the only, s the only thing which differs from one sound field to another are the coefficient of the projection, the BMN, which called the ambisonic components, uh, historically the B format for the first order. When you want to, to describe all of that with computers, you have to, to truncate this summation to work with matrix and vectors. And the truncation limits the spatial resolution of your sound field. And uh, usually the, the criterion is given by k wave number r, the distance to the origin, equal m, the order of truncation. For instance, I would like to synthesize this monochromatic uh, spherical wave 
in 3D and 2D view. And if I use this equation, you see that it's working pretty well in the, this sweet spot zone, which increase as I uh, take more and more uh, spherical harmonics. So um, we have analytic solution for uh, the BMN for uh, simple acoustic uh, sources like plane waves. So the plane waves are just the amplitude, the signals of your uh, you want to carry times the spherical harmonics in the direction of arrival of your plane wave. And for spherical waves, it's the same, but there is still th there is a f radial filtering uh, involving uh, spherical ankle functions, which describes the spherical wave fronts. So you see that you need to have spherical harmonics to describe this. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, M is going. It's okay, but, uh, N is going from um, minus. Uh, uh, oh, uh, sorry, it's minus N, minus M to M. Ah, okay. Oh, uh, there is a, a mistake there. Yep. Yes, M is the order, and N is the the degree of three uh, harmonics. So when you want to work with that, what is the, the signal flow? You know that up to in 3D, up to an abysonic order M, you have M plus one square signal to carry. And you're going to describe all of that in a vector of signals, which uh, the, the B in the Z domain. Then when you want uh, to manipulate this uh, sound field, in MB, uh, it's going to be described with a matrix operation. So you're going to have this matrix operation. The matrix is going to carry like the sound field transformation description, which can be a rotation matrix, which can be translation, why not, uh, directional filtering, like symmetrization or warping, and so on. The matrix is not necessarily square, which means that some transformation require the re-expansion to higher order, depending on the transformation. And the last step is the decoding. So you need a decoder matrix, which uh, uh, multiply your uh, transform and sound field to compute the loudspeakers or even the binaural signals, depending on what you're doing. So As we have something of the order of L times M squared? M, uh, uh, it's the number of uh, spherical harmonic, the signals you want to decode, and L is the number of loudspeakers. And yes, uh, when you design the decoder, you need to inverse the matrix. You should have at least uh, the same number of speakers and the, the, the number of harmonics you want to reproduce, even more is better. <laughs> That's the idea. So, so now, knowing all of that, what are the goals of the AmbiTools toolbox? So I would like to have something real-time uh, to allow maximal interactivity. So I want to, to push a button and have the immediate effect on the sound field. So this needs a cool C++ implementation and a lot of algebraic uh, simplification when you want the code to run efficiently. I would like the, uh, the toolbox to be scalable, which means that, as you saw, like the more spherical harmonic I take, the more the spatial resolution is. So I would like to, at the, the start of my code, just say, OK, I want m equal 1 or m equal 2 or and so on, and the, the, algorithm, the algorithm to follow, to scale. And then I would like to it to be flexible. Like uh, I, I would just like want to do the, the work once, and that it could compile for different uh, architecture or a plugin format. So guess what? I'm using FOSS to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going now. I'm uh, going to give you some more insights to the spherical harmonic implementation in my uh, toolbox because I tried uh, several uh, ways to do it, and now I have something which uh, is more scalable. So I recall the definition here. So this function involves a normalization factor. There are several around. I'm using the N3D one, which is this one. Then you have this uh, Legendre polynomial uh, of uh, the variable sinus uh, delta, and then this uh, cosinus N uh, theta, sinus uh, N theta. Uh, so, how to describe these functions with FAUST. So first approach, let's do it hard-coded implementation. Why not? So the idea is like, OK, I pre-compute all these functions for a family of functions, and then uh, I just hard-code them in the library with pattern matching. 
But th there is a scalability limitation because if I don't compute up to infinity, I, I will just have just uh, a limited number of functions. For instance, if I if I compute the y uh, three two, I have these functions here, and then uh, in uh, in Faust, I, I could use pattern matching and say, okay, when three two theta delta equal uh, the formula. Then then. Okay, when you see like the, the, the term of uh, involving the Legendre polynomials of sinus delta is a polynomial. So first gonna handle one variable of sinus delta and then uh, it's polynomial, uh, you're gonna use it for polynomial operation. So w knowing that, is it necessary to do additional trigonometric simplification in this case? Because you see here you have one minus sinus delta square so it is equal to cosinus delta square. But if you do that, you're going to involve a new variable, cosinus delta, to handle, instead of having just one sinus delta and then polynomial operation. So, and then finally, if I want a vector of spherical harmonics of all the, ser the same argument, for instance, to encode a plane wave, I'm going to, uh, force is going to involve uh, trigonomet trigonometric variables, like one for sinus delta, and then 2m plus 1 for the cosinus uh, n theta. So it's a lot of variable. So then, okay, uh, my goal is like, I would like to, to diminish this number of variable. A second approach is like, okay, why not doing a Cartesian formulation? So the idea is like, okay, I express now my spherical harmonics as a, in, card in card Cartesian coordinate system as a polynomial of x, y, z. And uh, in the case of the previous function, you'll have like uh, this polynomial here and with uh, the spherical to Cartesian transformation. So now if you require a vector of spherical harmonics with all the this same width, you're going to just have like four variables involving cosine, uh, trigonometric functions. So cosinus theta, cosinus delta, sinus theta, sinus delta. And then they're going to be shared for all the, the function. But doing that, there is as well a scalability limitation because when you want to express the spherical harmonics in, in Cartesian coordinates, uh, you're going to have a lot of uh, mathematical manipulation to have a nice polynomial. And this is not straightforward, so you, did, you need to work on it aside and then do again this hard coding. So finally, I did another approach, more scalable, which is the, the, cur the current one. So let's start with the, the first term, the normalization factor. So this one is not too hard to handle. It's just like, uh, okay, like a skewer t of uh, the, this function. And if n equals zero, or if n is different, you can have this, uh, this no norm. But this involves now a factorial opera operator. So I need to code the factorial function. And I had some issue with that, because if you do it with recurrence implementation, we're going to have some problem when, uh, when n is getting high. For instance, uh, if I, have a I want to compute this term for order 7, degree 6, it involves the 13 factorial. And if I do that with Faust, factorial 13 with this implementation of factorial, I'm going to have a wrong number instead of the, the true solution here. But <laughs> uh, no, of course it's not possible. But uh, I, I found no, that uh, yeah, possible, possible. yeah. But why not? It's a good use case. And uh, I, I circumvent this issue by using a little bit of uh, of math, knowing that uh, the gamma functions of n plus one equal n factorial. And in first in mathematical library, you have a math that gamma n plus one again factorial n, and this works well. <laughs> So, sorry for the, the normalization factor. Okay, then, uh, the associated legend polynomial. So, if you open uh, like uh, this kind of book, <laughs> Mathematical Method for Physics, you have a lot of formulas with recurrence and stuff, which helps a lot for the implementation. So, for instance, you know, you, you can compute uh, the associated legend polynomial with this formula here. But you can see there that there is some special case where when m equal n, the first term here is 1 over 0, so it doesn't work. And uh, if m equals m minus 1, 
there is a problem of definition because n should be uh, absolute value n should be less than m. So you then you introduce two more specific k's, uh, which are those two, and this one involves double factorial <laughs> function. So uh, finally, I have I have this uh, this implementation. So uh, it's a recurrence. I first case with pattern matching equal one, and then I have all these formula coded, and then factorial two. Again, you can you can uh, have an implementation involving factorial with this th th those formula. So okay, now I have the Legend polynomial, the okay the the normalization factor, and finally the cosinus n theta, sinus n theta. So those one are uh, famous with uh, Chebyshev polynomials, and uh, you can expand them like uh, with uh, these polynomials. And my go my guess is like I prefer to handle polynomials instead of having a lot of variable of trigonometric functions. So finally I I implement Chebyshev polynomial in force with recurrence. The first one is already in the libraries. The second one is not, but it could be. And so finally, at the end, we have these functions. So y m n equal n 3 d. So you got the functions times uh, associated legend, the genre, and then the Chebyshev uh, polynomials. And in this case, there is uh, no scalability issue. And if I if I uh, want a vector or spherical harmonics. Now I have just have three variables, cosinus theta, sinus theta, sinus delta, as in the definitions. So this is working pretty pretty well. And finally, if I want the ACN numbering, uh, AC indexing, I just call my function and then do the little formula to have just one subscript. So all these functions are is in a library called ymn.lib. Okay. So radial filter implementation. I just give an overview because I, I have no time otherwise. So in ambisonics, you you can uh, involve like two types of radial filters: the near field filters, which encode the the spherical wave, or which are involved in the near field compensation filters at the decoding stage. And you can have the filters in the f to encode the signals of a rigid spherical microphone arrays, for instance, involving the derivative of the Enkel functions. So the the implementation of these filters is, is made. You express it the, the the function with polynomials in the Laplace domain. Then you do the factorization, first order section and second order sections. Here you've got a scalability limitation because to f do this factorization, you need to know the roots of the polynomial, which is not an easy uh, algorithm. So I precompute the roots and I finally I, I precompute the first order section and second order section in a Mathematica uh, code. So now it's up to order 10, I guess. Uh, S to Z mapping, so impulse variance or bilinear transform. And then because those filters are uh, unstable at uh, zero, at DC there is an infinite gain, so you, you can stabilize them with near field compensation filters. Uh, but there is a, I have some issue with uh, instability after a uh, M above seven, I, I, I observed. So this is work in progress, and that's the results of, uh, for instance, the near field filters when you get the, the source inside the array or outside, and the uh, equalization filter for microphones. You see here, like uh, <laughs> it's it's not realistic at all. So of course, you I would I would like to bypass those uh, those uh, those uh, curves. Uh, even more, but this is work in progress. <laughs> so, uh, so, for the last minute, the four tools of the toolbox. So, as currently I have an encoder, so you can ask n sources, and then you have n plus one square spherical harmonics components. Uh, the decoder, I have various decoder for a regular grid, Lebedev grids, and then you have the awesome toolbox of Aaron, Aaron Heller and Bisonic decoder toolbox, which I use uh, for my demos. In some cases, you can use panning laws when the, the grid is regular enough. I have that for uh, Lebedev grids. Uh, I have a decoder for um, uh, a binaural involving a Lebedev grid and uh, 36 times 2 FIR filters. So this one is qui quite challenging <laughs> uh, because it's linear convolution. Uh, some converters to, uh, to go from one uh, normalization factor to another or one convention to another. 
uh, some micro microphone encoder, which are doing like this, uh, uh, the convert the microphone signals to spherical harmonics component. Uh, mirroring, so which inverts the, the direction in the sound field. Then we have beam forming. We can isolate one direction as a monophonic signals. We can leave it in space, or we can apply like a several beam pattern on the sound field. I have the rotator, like rotator in azimut and in 3D. This one is as well uh, not compiling after order four, because I'm using a recurrence implementation and uh, first. Uh, after a while, after uh, after four, uh, never ends the compilation. And uh, work uh, currently, I'm doing like a new, new sound effect, like a HY fader and uh, warping that uh, proposed Franz Zotter, for instance. So more and more tools uh, will come. So extra tools, uh, I provide a 3D view meter with processing. So you just give a CVS file with your spherical the loudspeaker position. Uh, this is the uh, these are the sources that you can see uh, moving. Uh, the balls are the speakers, and uh, it's pretty easy to modify. <laughs> and uh, fast convolution for the filter with J convolver. And finally, uh, I have head tracking, like here. I have it. I can show it to you if if you want. And uh, finally, I uh, I did a script to do online compilation automatically for people who doesn't want to know about host, sorry, <laughs> but want to illustrate the tools. So just to show you that, uh, how it works. So this is a, this goes, this is a PHP script, which uh, quer query uh, the GitHub repository and uh, first service.gram.fr. You choose the ambisonic order. I don't go, I could go higher, but I don't want to crash your server. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> M equal five, for instance, let's say I would like an encoder and I would like, uh, okay, ALSA QT send. So this is quite long, I should say, uh, I should uh, put a timer. And uh, so this drop the file on first service as a zip file, it does the compilation, and then when I got the zip back, I send it to the client. I hope it's gonna work. Yes, now yeah, you have it there. And uh, okay, and uh, uh, where is it? Uh, home, IFC, save. And now, if I go in in this folder, extract, uh, extract archive. Ici, okay, property, et exécutable. So finally, it's there. I click help. You see, you have the tools straight at m, m equal 5 in this case, so I ask. So and, uh, this page is going to be more and more uh, scriptable, so I, uh, you can set the parameters, the number of sources and stuff. And uh, So the, the, yeah, the idea is like for the user to have straight the tool and not uh, if he wants to do like a 3D sound out of the box. That's it for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if you want to see some demos, it's next door. I'm happy to show it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a question on the web. Yeah, so we have a question from Aaron Heller. <laughs> um, so he seems to be famous. Um, yeah, he asked, um, have you looked at the precision, uh, precision of the results of the Legender polynomial? Uh, yes, I've checked with my Mathematica implementation of it, and I compared the first, uh, first to uh, MATLAB output. Uh, I was asking a vector of spherical harmonics. I went up to order 12, even 13, and I had uh, the precision time uh, 10 minus 6, uh, working with quad precision at the compilation time. I didn't go higher because uh, I didn't see the necessity, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's working pretty well with this implementation. But uh, yeah, it's a matter of. Uh, but using quad? Yeah, using quad. I didn't went to see with a double or single uh, because I wanted to check if everything was working well. But it's a good study to to carry. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Just to mention that um, uh, AmbiTools received the Faust uh, awards uh, two years ago. And uh, and that we will have the Faust Award ceremony this uh, afternoon, 
and that also that we met uh, Pierre uh, three years ago during uh, LSC here at Mainz, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. he was doing his work of PhD work. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> push, push the compiler into the PC. Talking <laughs> about the limits, how, uh, what, what kind of M do you think is practical? Because ah. we have this one application with the with the electronic drum set, which has can have up to 20 pieces or something and so that might be a challenge right for uh, my personal listening test i did uh, i uh, after m i got free in 3d uh, you didn't see it's just like little details ah, okay so you like don't uh, have to go very up high so m equals five should be plenty for most applications yes so like it's yeah. 36 signal to carry right. To right. get to to handle, but uh, yeah, the, the the fact is like when you want to to increase your spatial resolution of just a bit, you need to handle right. a lot more of signals, and uh, I don't know if it's uh, so necessarily. If yeah. you're sitting in the sweet spot, then even m equals three. Yeah, and then you have after right. you have all these right. decoding tricks uh, mm. involving a VBAP and uh, and so on, mm. which uh, improve the the localization, ah, okay. or you can uh, can sell the the side lobes or the, the 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 speaker in the opposite direction from playing and there's a lot of tricks to to make it work pretty well at uh, lower orders so yeah after okay uh, thank you um i think we're running quite late so we should <laughs> move on but uh maybe you can do another demo yes. later in the uh, day so i i think i plug it back on uh, during the coffee break